Howdy my totally is always tubular game. We're back with another video. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Y'all know I love my ranking videos, but today we got a big one. Today we're ranking all the Naughty Dog games. I'm really posing the question to you. What is your favorite Naughty Dog game? This was a really hard list to make and yeah, let's just get right into it. Now Naughty Dog, they don't need much of an introduction. If you know video games, if you know PlayStation, you probably know who Naughty Dog is. The creators of the Crash Bandicoot series, the Jack and Daxter series, Uncharted, and the Last of Us series. They really have established themselves as one of the greatest video game developers of all time. It's pretty safe to say they have created some of the absolute greatest video games ever made. No hyperbole. A lot of these games really are those fantastic 10 out of 10 experiences that people just go absolutely nuts for and when it comes to ranking naughty dog games yeah this was a pretty difficult one to make i've ranked a lot of things in the past before but i really went back and forth with this one this is what i'm sticking to we're going to be ranking all the naughty dog games from worst to best we're stacking them up against each other weighing the pros the cons looking at the story the gameplay the presentation how well the game holds up we're looking at everything here we're gonna find out which naughty dog games truly are worth playing now i'll say it once i'll say it twice shoot i'll even say it three times this is my list this is my personal list that i curated this list is created entirely from my opinion it is based on my experiences it has to do with my taste my interests in gaming and i'll just say it's not your list it's my list you are very very well Welcome to agree or disagree with my list. You can tell me I'm wrong. You can tell me you agree with me. Either way, that's your opinion. You are very free to voice your opinion down below. I'll probably be reading it. So please let me know how you're feeling down below. But again, this is just my opinion. I know with a lot of these games, people get really heated just from the moment I even speak about them. A lot of people are really passionate about this studio and I am too. I have really strong feelings about this studio. I grew up playing Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter. I played Uncharted as a teenager i play the last of us nowadays shoot even professionally i have a connection to them i briefly worked with naughty dog when i was with sie it was only on last of us part one and two remaster slash remake but i even have a connection there and so like everyone else i have really strong thoughts opinions emotions whatever you want to call it about these series and these games and the studio as a whole and so again the last time i'm gonna say it this is purely just my opinion and if you agree or disagree it doesn't really matter in the end what matters is that we can have a civil discussion about it so please ask you what is your favorite naughty dog game or what does your list look like i would absolutely love to hear what everyone else thinks and see if i have some hot takes or cold takes or any of that stuff as always please like share comment subscribe we got the patreon and the super thanks any support is truly greatly appreciated seriously your support is everything and i really do appreciate it all right this intro has gone on long enough it's been like three minutes i'm just rambling at this point let's get into the list what is the worst game Naughty Dog has ever made? Well, I'm going for a cop-out answer, and I'm just going to say the worst game they made is not necessarily one game. It's all of the games they made before Crash Bandicoot 1. Yeah, it's actually pretty easy to forget that Naughty Dog did actually create a few games before Crash Bandicoot in 96 on the PS1. A few of these games were even developed before they were known as Naughty Dog. They were known as Jam Software for a few games before eventually, you know, rebranding to Naughty Dog and then going on to make Crash Bandicoot, and the rest is history. But but I'll be real, all the games they made before Crash Bandicoot, these are all easily the worst Naughty Dog games of them all, and some of these games actually really suck, and it's kind of weird to think about that Naughty Dog, the acclaimed developer that would go on to do amazing things, made these games, but you know, you gotta start somewhere, and it is great to see how far the studio has truly come. So all the games they made before Crash Bandicoot are as follows. Math Jam and Ski Crazed on the Apple II, Dream Zone on a bunch of old computers like the Amiga, DOS, Atari ST, they made Keith the Thief on DOS, Rings of Power on the Genesis, and then the infamous Way of the Warrior. Now, I don't have a ton of experience with any of these games, and frankly, I don't care to get much more experience with any of them. Way of the Warrior in particular is one of the worst games I've ever played for the 3DO, and it really is best left forgotten. In fact, all of these games are best left forgotten, so let's move on and forget about them. I will say though, these really are the only bad games Naughty Dog has ever made. Every game going forward is at the very least a pretty good game. And so with that in mind, which do I think is the weakest Naughty Dog game Crash Bandicoot 1 and on? And so here we have The Last of Us Part 2. Okay, I'm just fucking with you. It's not actually The Last of Us Part 2. 
Now, what I believe to be their weakest game, Crash Bandicoot 1 and on, is actually Crash Bandicoot 1 for the PlayStation in 1996. Now, before you get your pitchforks out, please just listen to me for a second. Crash Bandicoot 1 is a good game. It is a certified classic. It is one of the most beloved PlayStation games for a reason. It's good. It's even good nowadays. It's just when you compare all of the Naughty Dog games, I really think all their games are better than this game. I think every subsequent game after the original Crash is better than this game, but don't get Get it twisted i played this game not even that long ago and was still impressed with how well this game holds up but i'll be the first to say there are some parts of this game that have absolutely not aged well that just had me shaking my head now for the original crash bandicoot if you aren't familiar this really is the original game that introduced our favorite orange marsupial who would end up being one of playstation's mascots for many years and the game was really about him going up against his creator dr neo cortex and saving his girlfriend tana the plot really was as basic as you would expect for a 3D platformer in the 90s. Now when it comes to the gameplay, this game is a 3D platformer. I'll immediately say if you're not too familiar with my channel or my interests, I love 3D platformers. It's one of my favorite genres and this was one of the first 3D platformers I ever played. If I wasn't playing Mario, I was probably playing Crash. I will say immediately though, as a kid, I never got anywhere in this game. This truly is one of the hardest 3D platformers on the PS1. But yeah, it is a pure and simple 3D platformer. Most of the game, you're just running forward trying to get to the end of each level. Sometimes it's a side scroller and sometimes there's chase segments and you're actually running towards the screen. Along the way, there's plenty of boxes to break, which give you these wampa fruits, which basically act as the game's coins. However, destroying every box in a level gives you a special gem, which is one of the many collectibles. But to beat the game, all you really have to do is finish every level, unless you want to try to 100% it, which I do not recommend. When it comes to the feel and controls, it's very different from Mario it is stiff and it takes a bit of time to get used to but I think the controls are still decent enough here you got to remember the game was made in mind for the d-pad as PlayStation controllers did not have an analog stick yet and so I think it's fine for the time nowadays though yeah it's pretty stiff and it does take a few minutes at the very least to get used to this and the game really will test you there are many and I mean many obstacles trying to stop crash along his way whether it's the many enemies bottomless pits or traps everything in their mom really is trying to kill crash in this game and he's pretty fragile himself. Like if I haven't made it clear, this is a pretty difficult 3D platformer. I really couldn't get anywhere as a kid. And even nowadays, I really do struggle with it. It is not messing around. It is a difficult game. A lot of the platforming is really challenging. The enemy placement sometimes is nonsense. And some levels just have straight up horrible design. Like really any of the bridge levels, these are just awful. Same goes for the bosses. These just aren't very well made. And all I got to say about 100% in this game is don't. Don't even think about it. It is just ridiculous. Despite the flaws, though Crash Bandicoot 1 does have a lot of good things to it. The game has charm, it has personality, it has legendary music, it still does have plenty of good levels, it is satisfying, and while it is simplistic, I still had fun with it. At the very least, the game will keep you pretty engaged with how challenging it is, and in that sense it's pretty rewarding when you finally do beat those levels. All in all, the original Crash Bandicoot, it's a classic for a reason, and I absolutely think it is worth playing nowadays if you like 3D platformers, Crash Bandicoot, or you want to see where the series got started. It is available on the insane trilogy and that's easily the definitive way to play this game and it is pretty cheap now so if you really have any interest in this game or series it's worth getting and so here we have Jack X Combat Racing releasing for the PS2 in 2005. I'm sure the game being this low is going to upset a few people, but like Crash Bandicoot, I think this is still a good to great game. In fact, it's one of the best vehicular combat games on the PS2. It's just, I think all of Naughty Dog's other games really are better than this one. This would sadly be the last Jack and Daxter game developed by Naughty Dog. The game takes place after Jack 3 and sees Jack and all of his friends having a toast to a certain character, who unfortunately meets his end in one of the previous games. They all have a drink and then they're informed by a hologram he recorded beforehand that the drink they just had is actually poison and they are all going to die but not all hope is lost. They can get the cure to this poison by winning a racing tournament. Yeah. Well, it's not the worst story. It's not the worst way to get the cure to the poison, I guess. You know, I should just be glad there even is a story with this game. Most of these racing game spinoffs don't even have that, so it's fine for what it is. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, the meat and bones of this game, it is not your typical racing game. This game is pretty different from almost any other racing game. It is first and foremost a vehicular combat game with racing on top of it. See, in Jack 3, there was plenty of mini games or sections of the game where you actually would get in a vehicle and do vehicular combat. And really, what this game does is it takes those mini games or sections and really blows it up into its own game. 
You choose a car, you choose an event, and you pretty much go ahead. There's more than just typical racing here. There's actually some other events you do, and some of these are actually decently original, like where you're trying to hold on to a power cell. But there's plenty of races you'll do here, and along the way you have Mario Kart style items, only these items are used for, you know, destroying the other cars. This isn't Twisted Metal or Carmageddon, though. When you destroy someone, they will come back. It's just, you know, you're going to really slow them down if you blow them up. And you can get blown the fuck up also, you'll respawn, but in that time it takes for you to respawn and speeding back up, you very well might have lost the race or event. And so there are stakes here, and the game actually does have a decent amount of challenge. When it comes to being an actual racing game, I think it's pretty alright. The cars handle alright, they control better than they did in Jack 3, they have a nice feel to them, the game does have a decent to good sense of speed and you actually do get to go fast. Of course, the items really will make or break a lot of these races, but there is some skill involved, and it does get rewarding when you win by the skin of your teeth because you blew someone up at the last minute. I think that's pretty cool. I enjoy the racing. I enjoy the car combat. It's not the most deep gameplay, and I would say really all of the Twisted Metals on the PS2 are better than this game, but I still think it's good. The presentation saw the music is actually pretty great and very memorable and you might be asking why is this game so low on the list again all the other games are just better than this this game it doesn't have the most deep rewarding gameplay i don't think it has the best driving or the best vehicular combat but it's good at what it does and it still is a good amount of fun if you like jack and daxter if you like car combat games or are looking for a different kind of racing game especially one from the ps2 era and you haven't tried this i think it's worth trying and here we have the first Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, releasing for the PS3 in 2007. Now, the Uncharted series is very well known, obviously. It even has a movie nowadays, and this really is where the series got started. Naughty Dog started the series on the PS3. It was their first title for the PS3, and it was one of the PS3's killer apps, especially in those early years. The game is about Nathan Drake, alleged descendant of explorer Sir Francis Drake, as he really searches for the treasure of El Dorado with this journalist named Elena Fisher and his mentor Victor Sullivan. The story in this game, it's alright, it's a good introduction to the series. I will say though, it is easily the weakest story of the main Uncharted games. It is the one that feels the most like Indiana Jones, especially in a few aspects. It really just isn't as complex as the other Uncharted games. But the way this game did storytelling kind of feels ahead of the game. Really, when it comes to the gameplay, it feels like this game kind of was a trendsetter. You know, nowadays we expect a certain style of gameplay from really every first party PlayStation game. And Uncharted 1 was really the game to start it. You know, over the shoulder, third person cinematic shooter with tons of set pieces with interesting characters and it really is all about telling a narrative and then of course you go shoot shoot bang bang sometimes and maybe occasionally they'll throw some kind of gameplay variety in there like pushing a dumpster doing some platforming or solving a puzzle of some kind i'm not saying uncharted created narrative story based third person shooters there are plenty of narrative games before uncharted i'm just saying it really feels like this game made the blueprint for how it's done that The Last of Us would go on to use and then so many other Sony games. And when it comes to the gameplay, the game doesn't really play any different from the other Uncharted games. It still is at its core a third person shooter with lots of platforming, puzzle solving, and an emphasis on storytelling slash narrative. Now I know there's the PS4 re-release that's probably great and all, but I've only ever touched the PS3 game. That's what I own, and the gameplay, it has aged a little bit. Not necessarily the structure or flow or pacing of this game, but the controls, the feel, like the shooting is just okay in this game. Like it's sufficient, the cover system isn't amazing, but it's not going to win any awards and it's much better in later Uncharted games. The platforming is kind of clunky and it certainly has some rough edges. The puzzles, man, there's hella puzzles in this game, more so than like any other Uncharted game and some of them I just didn't really care for, I was getting sick of them. And a few of the set pieces, I won't lie to you, they're not great like the jet ski. Now, despite all that, I think the gameplay is still good. The game has a great pace to it, a great flow. It's always keeping things interesting. You're always moving on to new set pieces. The game has a great presentation. Like, this game is 15 plus years old, and you wouldn't even know it. It looks good even nowadays. Seriously, the presentation's great. The voice acting's excellent. The storytelling's good. The music is iconic. And I would still say, yes, it is a cohesive, nice experience. While it does have some flaws, I still have no problem recommending the original Uncharted, especially if you're a fan of the later games. Sure, this game is a bit more simplistic in its gameplay and story compared to the other games, but it's great to see where the series got its start, and it really only got better from here. And at the end of the day, I think this game still does have a pretty good narrative, which is kind of what it's all about at the end of the day. Uncharted 1, it's still good. 
And so here we have Uncharted The Lost Legacy releasing for the PS4 in 2017. I know some people might be surprised that I have this above the original Uncharted. This is the only Uncharted game that does not feature Nathan Drake. It's actually a spin-off about Chloe Frazier, one of Drake's friends and exes, and it's about her treasure hunting and expeditions and <laughs> a few other characters get involved and I'll just leave it at that. I actually like the story in this game. I think it's pretty decent to good. I think it's really interesting to have a game that's set in the Uncharted series and plays like an Uncharted game and has the Uncharted storytelling that doesn't have Nathan Drake. I can appreciate that it's a little different in that sense. I think the story is good and I think the pacing is quite good as well. When it comes to the gameplay, it is very similar to Uncharted 4. Like, when I mean very, I mean very similar. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was just a DLC at some point that then eventually became its own standalone thing. The shooting, the driving, the exploration, the platforming, the stealth, all of that feels really just carried over from Uncharted 4. And it was great in Uncharted 4, and it's great here. There's even, like, an open area you get to explore. There's not a lot to explore here, but yeah, there is an open area or two, and there's plenty of different set pieces you'll go through here. You'll be on another very, very long train, which is just an Uncharted special, it seems. And yeah, the set pieces are pretty solid. I think the shooting is very good. It's arguably the best shooting in the series since it's Uncharted 4's. The platforming is very smooth. The rope shows up and the rope is great in this game. It's great in all the Uncharted games and Last of Us. That rope just slaps. It's really great here. The puzzles, there's not a lot of them, but they're pretty decent and they don't feel all that intrusive. There's even some areas you can explore to the side, solve some side puzzles, get some collectibles, and that's cool. It extends the game time out a little bit if you're looking for a little bit more. As This is the shortest of the Uncharted games, taking only a few hours, but at the very least, it has very strong pacing. I think it's one of those short but sweet campaigns. I remember when it came out, a lot of people were saying that this game didn't need to be made and it was just Sony cashing in and low key it does feel like that still, but at least we have a pretty decent to good game here. And as you can imagine, it still has the production value you'd want from a Naughty Dog game. It still looks amazing. And if you like the other Uncharted games, yeah, you're gonna like this game. It's as shrimple as that. And here we have Crash Bandicoot 2 releasing for the PS1 in 97. Crash Bandicoot 2 really looks at the original Crash and improves it in so many different aspects. The game takes place a bit after Crash 1 and sees Crash hanging out with his sister Coco that they never mentioned in the first game at all, but she's a main character of the series going forward. And yeah, he's hanging out with her when all of a sudden he gets abducted by Cortex. And Cortex tells him he actually needs Crash's help to collect these crystals and yeah, save the world somehow. Coco, of course, though, is like, oh hell no, this ain't right. It's Cortex. Would you believe this fool and so yeah it's up to him to stop Cortex again. The plot's a little bit more involved and yeah I like the Cortex talks to you throughout the game. This game really does flesh out Cortex's personality a lot more than the first game. The story's fine for what it is. It really is just a setup for Crash to go through a bunch of levels collecting crystals. Rather than your objective just being get to the end of the level you do have to get the crystal otherwise the level basically isn't completed. Like the first game Crash can spin, he can jump, you'll destroy boxes and if you destroy all the boxes in a level you'll get a gem. To get the true ending you will have to get all of the gems there's also a bunch of secret areas and secret boxes to destroy as well this game actually has a good amount of secrets and it's what makes this game so replayable the biggest improvement to Crash's moveset is the slide and slide jump. This is honestly a game changer. It changes how you play through this game and it's an amazing addition that really adds a lot more depth to the gameplay. It doesn't feel as simplistic as the first game just thanks to this move alone. On top of that, the level design is much better than the first games. It's a lot more involved. There's a lot more going on here. There's more variety. There's different themes. Some of these levels have gimmicks to them and they're much better than the first game's gimmicks. I actually quite like them in this game outside of the jetpack. The jetpack sucks. And on top of all this, I think the pacing and the flow is just a lot stronger than the first games. And one reason is because this game doesn't have these massive difficulty spikes that are like as tall as a freaking mountain out here. No, the game gradually gets more difficult and I think the difficulty is a lot better scaled in this game. It does get challenging. It gets nowhere near as challenging as the first game, but it also doesn't just randomly throw it at you like the first game where you'll have this hard ass level and then you got like three normal levels. No, it's much better in that sense. The bosses are also better. They're not amazing but they're way better than the first games this game really is just a full-on improvement of the first game i'm not going to say it makes the first game obsolete but this game really is just a straight improvement in every conceivable way the presentation's way better and the music slaps i love the music of this game i have a ton of nostalgia for this game going on almost 20 years now and so i might be a little clouded but i think this game still holds up i think it's one of the best 3d platformers on the ps1 and i have zero problem recommending it nowadays
series. And here we have Jack 3 coming out for the PS2 in 2004. The story takes place basically directly after Jack 2 and sees Jack actually being exiled from the city and sent to go live in the desert. Well, he ends up with this desert civilization that's very Mad Max-esque. Say that three times fast, I dare you. Anyway, he's chilling in the desert with them. Not all of the game takes place in the desert. You do eventually return to the city. And I'll be real, when it comes to the story of Jack 3, I actually was always just kind of disappointed with it. Even as like a young teenager, I don't know. It just didn't hit the same as the first two games. I didn't really care for the antagonist. And maybe it's just me, but I always thought the ending to this game was rather inconclusive. The story's okay. It does have some great moments and there are a few good payoffs, but I just wasn't huge on it. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, it really does kind of feel like an evolution on Jack 2. Rather than being just the city, you now obviously have the full-on desert, which is way bigger than the city. Eventually, you do return to the city, but it is much smaller than the second game, but most of the game is in this giant open desert, and how are you going to get across that? You ain't running. You're getting in these cars. A lot of the game is set in these cars. There's a number of vehicles Jack can drive, whether it's just a regular looking buggy, whether it's the crazy bouncer where you jump all over the place, or something else entirely. There's a variety of vehicles to ride here. Some of them are great at terrain, some of them are good for the races and car combat. And honestly, I'd say you do almost as much driving in this game as you do platforming. The platforming is pretty much what it was in Jack 2. Jack is really the same moveset, except now he can actually become Light Jack, not just Dark Jack. And Light Jack actually is all based around traversal and you do some pretty cool platforming with that. But outside of Light Jack, yeah, Jack really does control and feel the same, which is great, by the way. I always kind of wish there was more platforming in this game. So much of this game is in the vehicles, and don't get it wrong. The vehicles control all right, they feel nice, and they are fun, but... I mean, I love the platforming in this game. This game could easily have the strongest platforming of the series, but there just isn't a ton of it. It always had me yearning for more, but you're not going to hear me yearning for the combat. There's a ton of combat in this game, and it is better than Jack 2. Jack 2 had four weapons. This game is like 12 weapons. You can upgrade your weapons. There's a lot more variety. You can kick way more ass in this game than you could in the second game. The combat is just straight better. Something else that is straight better from Jack 2 is the difficulty. This game is a lot better with its difficulty. There's no random difficulty spikes or cheap enemies or missions that's just a lot better paced in that sense. Despite that though, I kind of missed some of the missions from Jack 2. Jack 3 is a lot of great missions, there is variety here and you do a lot of other things that aren't platforming, but I don't know, I always thought Jack 2 just had slightly better missions even with the difficulty spikes. Jack 3 is a pretty solid game, it has a great presentation, it's different from the first two games, it's fun, and it has plenty of upsides. I have no problem recommending the game to people who like Jack and Daxter, platformers, or even people who like car combat games and driving games, they might get a kick out of this one. Do I think it's the be-all end-all of the series? No, but it still is a pretty good game. And here we have Uncharted 3 releasing in 2011 for the PS3. I remember this game actually came out the same day as Sonic Generations, which is pretty cool. Now Uncharted 3, as the title implies, it takes place after Uncharted 2 and it sees Drake teaming up with Sully to go find this mysterious treasure, this city of Aram of the pillars. I think the story's pretty good in this game. I don't think it's as good as Uncharted 2 or 4, but I think it's more than solid enough and provides another cinematic epic roller coaster of a story that yeah, I enjoyed. It does feel a little tropey, I'm not going to lie, especially when they're talking about Drake's past and a lot of this game actually does focus on Drake's past and how he knows Sully and his upbringing and all of that. And now that I think about it, I'm not really sure where the movie takes place cuz that's before Uncharted 1 also. Maybe that's before even this game, man. I'm not even sure. The story is fine for what it is. I like the flashbacks and I like where it goes in this game. When it comes to the set pieces, I think they're pretty good. It has one of the most memorable, iconic Uncharted set pieces. Really just one of the most iconic set pieces of like any video game in it where Drake flies out of the plane and lands in the desert. It's very iconic, cinematic, and it's stuck in my head forever. It really is burned into my head. Now when it comes to the gameplay, it plays incredibly similar to Uncharted 2 in just about every aspect. It feels a little bit better than Uncharted 2. The shooting is pretty decent. Taking cover is good and these combat encounters I think they're pretty good the melee combat has been significantly improved over Uncharted 2 it's just straight better in like every imaginable aspect it's also a lot more cinematic and it feels like Naughty Dog's just kind of been recycling the melee combat since this game but hey it's good here it's good nowadays 
When you aren't going shooty shooty bang bang from gun or throwing your fists at someone, you are platforming or puzzle solving in this game or hearing exposition and just walking. I think the platforming is pretty good in this game, I'd say it's on par with the second game. And the puzzle solving, it isn't too intrusive, I think it's fine here, I don't really have any issues with it. When it comes to the pacing and the flow of this game, I also think it's quite good, it's obviously very cinematic, it does feel like a roller coaster at times, and I don't really have many issues with it. I think Uncharted 2 is a stronger pace, flow, and is just a better experience, but Uncharted 3, very solid. It has some great set pieces that aren't the plane, and it's full of memorable moments, and I enjoyed the encounters in this game. Something that doesn't get talked about nearly enough with this game is the multiplayer. I actually remember the co-op in this game. I loved the co-op missions and I don't see anybody talking about that nowadays so I guess I'll just forget about it too. But that's a real shame. Look, Uncharted 3, it's pretty great and I'm not really sure what to say about it at this point. Like if you like the Uncharted games, if you like cinematic third person shooters or action games or you like story based games, I think you're going to like the game if you haven't played it by now. I have no problem recommending it. It was one of the best PS3 games period and I think the game absolutely still holds up 12 yes 12 years later and here we have crash team racing releasing for the ps1 in 99 i'm sure plenty of people are probably going to disagree with me having this game so high up on the list but i'll just be real man i love crash team racing this game is one of my absolute favorite kart racers of all time we do have a remake now of this game that's even better than ever but just looking at this original game it slapped then it slaps now this game is legit this was the last crash game developed by naughty dog and it feels like like they put their all into this one so this game actually does have a story it sees crash and friends getting abducted by this alien known as nitrous oxide and they need to defeat him in a race in order to save the world everyone's also now in carts i like the premise and setup i think it's cool this game even has that this game also has a ton of fan service from the other three crash games it feels like a love letter to the first three in many aspects because it was naughty dog basically saying goodbye to crash here and it can totally feel like a best of at times especially with the character roster a bunch of the characters from the first First three games show up in fact i'll just say this game is a pretty solid lineup of racers obviously the remake is significantly better but i like what this game has i think it's solid now when it comes to the racing itself the racing in crash team racing oh it is so good this is one of the best feeling kart racers ever and it is crazy how good this original game felt the game has an excellent feel and solid controls behind it that you can easily pick up and understand, but man, it is so hard to master. The skill ceiling is crazy in this game. This game's gimmick main focus really is on drifting. Sure, there's jumps, sure, there's boosts, there's items, but drifting, drifting really is everything here. Getting those big drifts, connecting your boosts, connecting your drifts, that's what it's all about here, and you can get really, like, really freaking raw at this game. I've always really appreciated just how high the skill ceiling is in this game. You can go so fast and you can blast through these courses and it's a blast. It is so much fun, man. I have not had this much fun with many other kart racers, racing games in general. It was great as a kid. It's so good now. Like, it is unbelievable how just nice this game has aged. Graphically, sure, it can be a little rough at times. I think it looks all right. The music is great. It's even better in the remake. And when it comes to racing games, I really just don't have many other ones I would put above CTR. It's actually that good. There's other modes here besides racing, which are cool. There's a ton of multiplayer fun here. The story mode's incredibly replayable. Sure, it's only a few hours, but I've played through it several times. I recommend 100%ing it. It really is worth it. And it's just an excellent experience through and through. Even the boss fights are good. Even the boss fights are good. This is one of those games I look at and I'm going to sound like a boomer here for a moment but they just don't make them like they used to. This game came from the 90s, it oozes 90s personality and charm but it also has the gameplay to back it up and it feels like it did its own thing with the drifting, it had its own personality and the amazing part is it still totally holds up. It's still a lot of fun now and I think anybody that likes driving games or kart racers or Crash Bandicoot is going to enjoy the game, pure and simple and that's why I have it even this high on the list. Yes, the spin-off kart racer. It's really good. And I'm still holding out hope this isn't the last racing game Naughty Dog makes. I'm waiting for Uncarded. You know it's coming. Uncarded must come. And here we have Uncharted 2 Among Thieves releasing for the PS3 in 2009. I'm sure someone's going to get their feathers ruffled that I don't have this game near the top spot. And I'll just say, you know, I love Uncharted 2. I really do. It's one of the very best Uncharted games. It's just, you know, it's the same excuse I've said a few times now. I think all the games above it are better. That's kind of how a ranking works. But that is no knock on Uncharted 2. Not in the slightest. Because Uncharted 2 is still a great game. It won a ton of Game of the Year awards in 09 for a reason. 09 absolutely slapped also. 
and Uncharted 2 is near the top of the mountain for me from that year. So Uncharted 2, you know, it's a follow-up to the first game and it sees Nathan Drake teaming up with Elaine and newcomer Chloe Frazier as they're looking for this mystical stone, you know, treasure hunting and all that good stuff. Look, the story is just a straight-up improvement on the first games. It's one of the best stories of the series. It doesn't just feel like Indiana Jones and it feels like it has much more of a personality of its own. I appreciate the story, I like the pacing, I like where it goes, I like the twists, and I actually did like the ending. I think the characters and really the character development is a lot better in this game. Also, the first game, you know, it was fine, but this game they really flesh everything out and make them seem, you know, more human with more personality, and I think that's great. When it comes to the gameplay, yeah, this is just a straight improvement on Uncharted 1. It is Uncharted 1, but better. You're getting into gunfights, you're beating people up, you're beating their ass down with your fists, you're doing a ton of platforming, you do some really wild jumps in this game, there's some puzzle solving, and of course there's plenty of exposition, dialogue, and treasure hunting. I'll just immediately say this game's set pieces own the first games. This game has excellent set pieces, some of the very best of the Uncharted series, if not gaming in general. I mean, the train scene at the beginning is incredibly iconic. It's one of the greatest intros to any video game. Seriously, the train is great. If you haven't experienced the train sequence of Uncharted 2, maybe you should check it out, especially if you're a train head like me. It's some good shit. But yeah, the set pieces absolutely kick ass in this game. They're great. When it comes to the shooting, it's just straight up better than Uncharted 1's. The shooting is a lot tighter, the AI's better, it feels nicer, it controls better, getting into cover's better. There isn't a bunch of areas where you'll just get shot through the cover like the first game. It's good. Could it be better? Yes, it absolutely could. It's better in Uncharted 3 and 4, but I think it's good here. The platforming also feels much less rough around the edges. It's a lot smoother and feels like it's ready for you to do things that might not anticipate. Unlike the first game where it just kind of doesn't know what to do and you bounce all over the place off invisible walls. The platforming really is just straight better and I like it in this game. The puzzle solving also quite a bit better. It's not as annoying. The puzzles are better and there's not as much of it. And when they show up, you know, it's not the worst thing. It does change up the pace. It does keep things interesting. And I can appreciate they do it here. They've also got, you know, the usual treasures you can find hiding around if you explore the environment. And I think that's cool. It makes it a little more replayable. I say that, but I've never found Uncharted the most replayable because once you know the story, it's kind of hard to go back. But the story is good. The pacing is excellent. It really does feel incredibly cinematic. And this game has some great moments to it. The presentation is nothing but astounding, the characters look great, the voice acting is excellent, everything looks amazing, the textures are great, the explosions are great, the soundtrack is great, like anything to do with the presentation is superb, the game came out in 09, you could convince me it came out maybe a few years ago. Outside of the excellently paced 8-10 to 10 hour campaign, I remember there was multiplayer, but I have never liked multiplayer in Uncharted, whether it's 2, 3, or 4, I don't know, this just never hit for me, maybe that's a hot take, but it is what it is, it's gone now, so I don't even know why I brought it up. Anyway, Uncharted 2, it was called one of the greatest games of all time in 2009, and I think it absolutely holds up nowadays, it's still an amazing cinematic adventure that really should not be missed by anybody that likes the Uncharted series, third person shooters, action adventure games, yada 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 you know this game slaps you already know let's just move on and here we have Uncharted 4 Thief's End coming out for the PS4 in 2016. I very much remember when this game came out. I got my PS4 for this game, so I do actually have that blue PS4 for Uncharted 4. And you know, 8, yes, 8 years later, Uncharted 4 is still great, and in my opinion, the best of the entire Uncharted series. The story takes place many years after Uncharted 3, and Drake has pretty much retired, just living a happy, peaceful life. But then his long-presumed brother, Samuel, shows up and asks him to go on one final treasure hunt. And so yeah, he comes out of retirement, solely shows up, and they all go on this treasure adventure. I actually really like the story of Uncharted 4. It's probably my favorite story of the entire Uncharted series. I really like his brother. I like the dynamic between them. I like how it ties things up. I love the ending. Like Uncharted 4, I think from start to finish, just has a wonderful story through and through. It has one of the best stories of any PS4 game, let alone just video games in general. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that go, It's just Indiana Jones, now with his brother, it's boring, it's contrived, it's lame, it's lazy, blah blah blah. Yeah, well, whatever. I don't think that. I love the story to this game. I think it's great. I think the characters are great. I think they're all really well developed. I like where the game goes. And again, I really like the ending. When it comes to the gameplay of this game, I really do think it is the best of the 
the Uncharted games. It isn't the most innovative or mind-blowing, I won't lie to you, but it's the most refined of all of the games. You still go shooty shooty bang bang with your guns, there's plenty of different guns, and the gunplay is the best of the whole series here. Like, the guns actually feel pretty good, the shooting feels nice, it's tight, the way the enemies react is good, the AI is solid enough, yeah, the gunplay is the best of the series here. Fist fights are good, but yeah, pretty button mashy as usual. This game does introduce stealth for several sections of this game, which I think is cool. The stealth is very, very basic here, but it's a neat addition nonetheless. And speaking of certain sections, yes, this game has certain sections that aren't just shoot everything in sight or jump all over the place. There's actually a few more non-linear areas that you can explore around. There's a part where you get a car and you get to just drive around. I've always loved this part of the game. And sure, it's not a real open world, but I don't know, it's different, it adds variety, and it keeps things interesting. It keeps things exciting, and it left me engaged. I was on the edge of my seat, yeah, see? If every game kept me this on edge, I'd have my 350 back from the Loch Ness Monster, but they don't, so, oh well. I think the game's pacing is excellent. It is like the best of the entire series. I think they really have a good amount of variety throughout this entire thing, whether it is one of the gunfights, whether you're being stealthy, or you're in the car, or it's one of the amazing other set pieces. Seriously, the set pieces go nuts in this game. While the set pieces aren't as iconic as some of the other Uncharted games, they just go so nuts and have so much going on, and it's so much fun that I really do think these are the best set pieces to play through. As always, there's puzzles here, and the puzzles are decent enough. They're probably in this game the least compared to the other ones, but yeah, there's puzzles. This game introduces the Naughty Dog Rope, which is just the best rope of any video game like ever. And it's not all just for show to show off the physics. You can actually do some pretty cool things during gameplay with it where you swing around and beat people up. I actually had a lot of fun with the combat because of the rope. The combat is the best of the Uncharted games almost single-handedly because of this rope. This rope ain't slacking. Okay, horrible, horrible joke aside, when it comes to playing through this game, it is just a joy through and through. It has, in my opinion, the best pacing, some of the strongest set pieces, the best combat, and it looks phenomenal. This game looks incredible. The presentation is off the chain, man, off the chain. It's just amazing. I have nothing but praise for the presentation. This really is just a fantastic game. If you're looking for one of the best games you could play over the last 10 years, Uncharted 4 is up there. And yet, despite that, I don't even have this game in the top five. Maybe I'm just totally crazy and that's a hot take, but man, these next couple games really just go that hard, I guess. And so for our next game, we have The Last of Us Part 2, releasing in 2020, and now we have The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, releasing in 2024. This game, just me mentioning this game, is probably going to get people coming out of the woodwork to say something, and all I gotta say is, I think The Last of Us 2 is a good game. I think it's a pretty great game. I would say it's better than all the games I've mentioned so far. Does it have some issues? Yes, but I think the strengths really, really outweigh the negatives here. It came out in a really dark time in 2020 during COVID when we still just really didn't know when this was going to end. Do I think it was the best game of 2020? No, I still don't think so. I think that there were several other games that were better, but that's just me and my hot take apparently, but let's talk about The Last of Us 2. This game takes place several years after the first game, and that's all I'm really going to say for the story. Saying anything more I feel like is spoilers. Look, I know like everything has been spoiled about this game's story at this point, but I'm not going to do that. I don't like to spoil game narratives in my videos, and I'm not about to start now. The story, look... I am all over the place about it. I have gone back and forth so many times with this game's story. Is it phenomenal? Did it exceed my expectations? Did it do something crazy? Or is it just stupid and nowhere near as good as the first game's story? I've really gone every direction with this game's story. There are things that I love about it. There are things I don't love about it. This game has a lot of just straight shocking moments that I don't think anybody like ever expected to see in a video game, let alone a triple A game. And it's crazy that they did this. And you know what? I gotta say, it's pretty cool that the naughty dog has not been neutered and they still got some balls. This game has some gruesome, shocking images and scenes that will live in infamy forever. There are things I don't like about the story. I will be as blunt as a golf club, I don't like the ending to this game. I really just don't like the last act of this game. I never have, that's one thing I've always been firm on. I'm just not a fan of how this game ends or the ending hours. And you know, maybe I'm not supposed to like it. If that's the case, 
And I guess they achieved what they set out to do. You know, a couple years ago, I actually interviewed with Naughty Dog for a production position, and they told me Last of Us 2 was designed to be just a miserable experience. You're supposed to be as depressed as possible from playing this game. It's not supposed to be a fun or good time. And yeah, they got that. I was fucking sad. This game certainly pulled a lot of emotions out of me. I think it pulled a lot of emotions out of everyone. No one can deny that one. My other issue with the story, really my biggest issue with this entire game, is the pacing and the length. This is the longest game Naughty Dog has ever made, and in my opinion, it's just too long. There are several parts of this game that just drag from a narrative perspective and a gameplay perspective where I'm like, come on, get it over with. Like, a lot of, if not almost all of the sections with Abby really just go on too long, in my opinion. But she wasn't also exactly my favorite character. Neither was Ellie by the end of this, though. Look, at the end of the day, when it comes to the story, I think there's some good, and I think there's some bad, and some really sad. But I think this game's story, really this game in general, is just one of those games you need to experience for yourself and create your own opinion on. Everybody's going to be different on this one. Don't just watch some 30 minute analysis and then judge the game based off that. I think this game really is one of those games you need to experience to form your own opinion. And look at that, I've been talking about this game for like 4 minutes and I haven't even really mentioned the gameplay. The gameplay is actually very similar to the first one, it's not all that different. It's for the most part a very linear third person shooter that's incredibly cinematic and has some survival elements. A majority of this game is not action. It is slowly walking around getting dialogue, exposition, and storytelling. If you don't like storytelling games or you need your games constant non-stop action, you aren't going to find it here, straight up. This game's pacing is very slow. A lot of the game, you really are just taking in this world and the characters. It's a good thing that the presentation is as good as it is. The graphics, the textures, the frame rate, the character models, the acting, the delivery, it's nothing short of phenomenal. Nobody's gonna deny that. The production values are insane. This game looks insane. And the acting truly is Hollywood level, sometimes even better than Hollywood in my opinion. I mean, we just got the remaster air quotes and it really doesn't look any better because I don't know how you really make this look any better. It just looks phenomenal. But when you aren't just staring at it or walking around slowly, you're usually getting into combat. The combat in this game is pretty good. I'd say it's just as good as the first games. There's a couple different approaches you can take here. You can try to be stealthy and take everyone out silently. You can even make distractions. There's actually traps you can have here too, which is cool. But I'm not not gonna act like the stealth is amazing here. I think it's fine for what it is. It's also not the focal point. I don't expect it to be amazing, but it gets the job done. But if you don't want to be stealthy, you got a couple options. You got your gans, you got your fists, you got some bombs like molotovs and grenades. And the combat's totally different in this sense, and I think it's actually pretty solid. I always thought the gunplay of The Last of Us 1 and 2 is pretty good. The weapons have weight. I like how there's impact. I like that enemies aren't just bullet sponges for the most part. You aren't either, and you can die pretty quick. I think it's satisfying, and I think it's more than serviceable enough. I've heard people say, oh, the shooting's not that great in these games. I don't know. I think it's actually pretty all right. Maybe I'm just crazy here. The melee combat, though, yeah, it's about as basic as Uncharted 3's. It's a little bit more cinematic, but you really are just kind of pressing one button. It's just kind of there. And then you get grenades, you get Molotovs and all that, and that's cool to use. It adds a little bit of variety to the combat. I think the combat is pretty good in this game. I'm not going to act like, you know, it's the be-all, end-all of combat. This ain't no Doom Eternal sandbox. But again, more than gets the job done. It's certainly cinematic, it's dirty, it's gruesome, it's grimy, and it kind of makes you feel like an awful person. In fact, this game regularly does that and it does a damn good job where I play this game and I go wow I'm a piece of shit and that's why I don't want to replay this game and the last thing to mention I guess would be the survival and crafting elements it's really the same as the first games as you're just kind of exploring around picking things up and then you're able to craft things that will help you in battle or to upgrade your weapons it's nothing crazy innovative or imaginative or original here it doesn't even really feel all that different from the first games and a lot of the time is yeah you looking around and just pressing triangle but I thought it was fine in like a 10 to 12 hour game, but this game is double that length and I won't lie to you, looking around picking stuff up, it does get old. Like it feels like at some point all this gameplay gets old because this game just keeps going and going and I feel like the gameplay isn't set up for such a long game and at times, yeah, it can almost feel even repetitive. But there are some set pieces here that do keep things interesting. I like the non-linear areas and there are some good ones here. And of course, there's plenty of gruesome, awful things happening to keep you engaged throughout. But gameplay wise, yeah, at times it feels like it gets stale. And it kind of makes me wish Naughty Dog could have innovated a little more, brought some more new ideas to the table just to keep things fresh. But that's enough about Last of Us 2. I'm going to wrap all this up and just say, 
I think the game is very good. I think it has a lot of amazing points to it, but there are a few things that I don't like. There is the remaster version that is out now that adds the survival mode and the deleted scenes you can play through. I think that's pretty cool. More games should do that. The survival mode, it seems fine enough. You can play as other characters, which is cool. I kind of wish this update was free, you know, like God of War Valhalla, but maybe that's just me. At the end of the day, The Last of Us Part 2 is The Last of Us Part 2, and you can't deny that. It really doesn't matter what I say. People are going to be upset about this. If you're upset about what I've said about the game, let me know down below as always. Let's really just move on to the next game. I talked about this game way longer than the other ones, but I had a lot to say about it. It. I'm sure plenty of people are going to think it's blasphemous to have any games above Last of Us Part 2, but here we have Jack 2 coming out for the PS2 in 2003. Call it nostalgia or my love for platformers, but I've always thought Jack 2 goes really hard and I still think the game is excellent to this day. Now Jack 2 might be the follow-up to the Precursor Legacy, but this game is very different from its first game in almost every way, especially the story. The story is completely different, seeing Jack and Daxter whisked away to another dimension that is very urban and just different from the first game and the moment they show up Jack gets captured and experimented on for two years until Daxter's able to save him and the only thing Jack wants to do after being experimented on for two years is getting his revenge and eventually saving the city. The story in Jack 2, oh it's just so good. I love the story and world of Jack 2. In the 2000s lots of games took dark edgy turns and Jack and Daxter did as well but for the better in my opinion the story is great. The characters are great. It's dramatic. It's epic. It's interesting. It's very different from the first game, and I really do think it's one of the best stories of like any PS2 game. I just really enjoyed the story. I love the world. It's so interesting and such a contrast to everything the first game was about. I think the characters have way more depth, especially Jack and Daxter. Like, they got a lot more going on here, and some of these characters are really lovable. I also think the antagonist is pretty good. He's the best antagonist of the series, easy. Like no cap, the story, world building, and world itself is very good in Jack 2. When it comes to the gameplay, it's really not that much like the original game. They clearly were inspired by one game. GTA 3. This game is very much inspired by GTA 3. The game is now an open world game where you can steal cars and drive around and you do missions for characters. And I know there are plenty of people that much prefer the first game's format and progression and like it being a much more straightforward 3D platformer versus what this game was going for, but I actually quite like the progression and flow of this game where it is, yes, more like a traditional open world game where somebody's going to give you a mission, you go drive to that location, they give you the mission, you drive to where you're supposed to go, you do the mission, and then you likely drive back. And sure, while it's not the most original format, you got to remember this game came out 20 years ago. That's a scary thought, but yeah, 20 years ago, it wasn't dead as a doornail, so that is one thing to keep in mind. These missions, though, are really what you're doing most of the game if you're not just driving around. While this game might not be a collectathon like the prior game, it is still a 3D platformer. You just get guns and vehicles now. And you know, I've mentioned the vehicles a few times already. I'll just say the driving in this game is pretty decent to good. I think everything controls nice. I never really had any issues. Is it amazing when it comes to the controls? During the races, it certainly isn't. But for the most part, I think it's fine. You can get used to it within a couple minutes. And while I think Jack 3 actually does have better vehicles, at least when it comes to the controls and feel, this is still pretty good. And speaking of controls and feel, we have Jack himself. I think he's solid enough in this game. I like how he feels and I think it's really tight when it comes to the controls. You'll be doing a decent amount of platforming in this game and the platforming I think is pretty solid. The level design is good. The open world is nice. The open world is decently designed, but when there's actual level design and it's linear, I think it's pretty good. And there are plenty of interesting levels and areas you'll go to in this game. The combat is totally different from the first game. While there is melee combat that is basically the same as the first game, there is a focus on guns. There's four gun types in this game, and while there isn't a lot when it comes to variety of the guns, they all handle and behave very different from each other, so that's good. When it comes to the combat overall, I think it is pretty good. I think the guns feel nice. I like how different they are. The melee combat, while it is simple, is still satisfying, and I really just don't have any issues with the combat. It is better in Jack 3 as there is more variety in weapons, but hey, we got Dark Jack here once you collect enough Dark Eco, but I'll be real, he just kind of sucks. Anyway, Jack 2's combat, yeah. I don't really have any major issues with it, and I think it's actually aged pretty well. In fact, it's pretty remarkable how well this game has aged in general. 
it still feels and plays really nice. I think the game has a great flow to it. It is a nice progression. There's a lot of variety. They keep things interesting with different mini games and vehicle types. And there's plenty of missions where you're not platforming, shooting things, or driving around in a vehicle. And I really enjoy these, like the one where you're on the hoverboard and it's like Tony Hawk style. I've always loved the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series, and so you know I'm going to love this. The game still looks pretty good. It has a really nice aesthetic to it that just oozes 2000s. Like, I love the aesthetic of this game. It had really great production values for the time and I think it's aged very well graphically. The music also slaps, love the music of this game. And honestly, at the end of the day, Jack 2 really is one of my favorite games of all time. So you might be asking, why isn't it higher on the list? Why do you not think it's even the best Jack and Daxter game? I love this game to death. I really do. But as someone who's replayed through this game multiple times, I can tell you this game just has some really shitty missions unforgivable difficulty ever i hate the difficulty i hate the torture i hate the pain and punishment yeah! like i just cannot in good faith put this game at the top of the jack and daxter series some of these missions are just absolute dog shit there really is no other way to go about it some of these missions just suck no matter how many times i played through this game i just dread some of these missions the balancing is just all over the place some of them are really cheap the ai are just ridiculous like in some of the races There's some really, and I mean really strict time limits, and sometimes the difficulty just spikes up through the ceiling, like it gets stupid hard, and then the next five missions you have no problem, but then there's another really hard one, like some of these missions really do suck, and the checkpoint thing can kiss my ass, I always hated that as a kid, and I hate it nowadays, I don't want to waste hella time going back and forth and retrying shit. Now I know I just complained for like a minute about some of the missions, but I still think Jack 2 is 100% worth playing if you like 3D platformers, if you like open world games, or you haven't tried it yet, I totally think it's worth trying. It's an epic, awesome story with some really solid gameplay. Just be wary that, yes, yeah, some of the missions are really shit, but go play it. I really do recommend it. And so here we are with Crash Bandicoot 3. Now Crash 3 has always been a huge favorite of mine, it's one of my favorite 3D platformers ever and in my opinion it is the best of the entire Crash Bandicoot series. Like all these years later, Crash 3, oh man, this game is still so good. It's like they really looked at the first two, heavily improved on it, threw in a bunch of new stuff and just a different energy about it to create an unforgettable experience. The game is a fun little story where after Cortex fails again, an evil mask known as Uka Uka who Cortex responds to says, this time we're not messing around, we're gonna do time travel, we're doing anything to stop those bandicoots and so it's up to Crash, Coco, and Aku Aku to really stop them. And along the way a bunch of other villains show up to try to stop Crash and yeah it's up to them to defeat them all. I quite like the story, I really like the premise, but what I like the most is how the characters all talk to you like before levels. I've always really enjoyed this, the characters have a lot of personality and really show it off here. I also love Cortex as he just kind of feels defeated and he's like man whatever. But I think the premise here is good. It's not award winning and some people might laugh that this game is above Last of Us 2 with a premise like this, but hey, I like the story. When it comes to the gameplay, this is where the game absolutely delivers. They really, and I truly mean really, improve on Crash 2. This is like the best Crash has ever felt in any of his games. Crash 4 is very close, but this game just feels immaculate. I love how it feels. It controls incredibly well. Crash is great. His moveset is greatly expanded from the first game and even more expanded than the second game. Sure, he starts with the slide jump like the second game, but you get a bunch of different moves here. You get a double jump. You could pull out a bazooka. You can spin hella long. It's great. I love the moveset. The levels actually really do take advantage of this moveset and the levels. Oh, the levels in this game are so so good. The level design is fantastic. The best of the Crash Bandicoot series. There's not like a bad level in here, in my opinion. The level design really is just so good. It's interesting. It's different. Almost all of the levels are very different from each other. Some of them have gimmicks. I think all of the gimmicks are actually very good. I know plenty of people don't like the motorcycle, but I like the motorcycle even with its stiff ass controls. I like how much variety there is with these levels. Some levels you don't play as Crash. You actually play as Coco on a vehicle. I really enjoy these as well. Like, I really don't think there's a single bad level here. I like the pacing. I like the flow. I like the difficulty ramp this game has. It's the best of really any Crash game. It does get pretty challenging by the end of it, especially if you want 100% the game, but it does.
doesn't have this whack ass difficulty like the old games, 100% in this game is so worth it. There are not many games I will tell you to go 100%, but Crash Bandicoot 3 is one of those games. I think the game is a much better experience 100%ing it and collecting everything. There's a good amount of collectibles here, not just the gems and the crystals, and I can really appreciate that. The game is replayability. Sure, it's not stupid long and 100%, it's probably 10 hours max, but it's a very tight, smooth 10 hours that is just an excellent experience from level one to the final boss. Oh yeah, the bosses here, maybe the best of the whole series. I actually really do enjoy the bosses. The presentation was great for the time. The music is excellent. In fact, the main theme has just become kind of synonymous with Crash Bandicoot at this point. Like it really is that good. I remember Wrath of Cortex, they couldn't even think of an original theme because this game's main theme is that good. But that game took more than just a main theme from Crash 3, but that's a conversation for another day. Look, Crash 3, a lot of variety, excellent levels, great move set, superb presentation. I really don't know what else you're looking for in a 3D platformer. Sure, it's not open. It's a very linear 3D platformer. You're moving forward or it's a side scroller. But out of all the games to have the Crash Bandicoot formula where you're moving forward like this and it's quote the ass game, I really think this is the best one of them all. Crash 4 is also excellent. It has an amazing amount of content. It's a lot of great stuff going for it, but I think this game is a stronger pace and progression to it. I think the flow is just really good and 100% in Crash 4 is just such a nightmare. I don't even want to think about it, but I'll wrap this up. Crash 3, fantastic 3D platformer. It's almost my favorite PS1 game, almost. Final Fantasy 7 exists. But if you are someone who has ever liked Crash Bandicoot platformers or Naughty Dog, oh, this game is a must play. It is absolutely a must play in my opinion. It has been re-released thanks to the Insane Trilogy and it's just as great there. Really one of my favorite games of all time and I just give huge recommendations for it. And here we have it, Jack and Daxter and the Precursor Legacy, releasing for the PS2 in 2001. Look, I know it's a bit of a hot take to have the Precursor Legacy above Crash 2, Crash 3, Jack 2, Jack 3, but man, I've just kind of always thought the Precursor Legacy really is the best platformer Naughty Dog made. While Jack 2 might be my favorite, I just can't in good faith put Jack 2 any higher on this list. The Precursor Legacy really is one of the best 3D collectathons ever. I'd put it up there with Banjo Kazooie and Tooie. It really is that good and it has aged incredibly, incredibly well. So this game has a pretty unique premise. It takes place in this mystical world, and you play as this young teenager named Jack who is not cussing and using guns. He actually doesn't speak at all in this game, and he's hanging out with his friend Daxter, who accidentally gets turned into an otzel, which is like this fictional otter weasel thing, and obviously he doesn't want this. So he goes and asks village wise men Samos the Sage on how to get rid of this. And basically he tells you to collect power cells. There's a bit more to this story and the ending is pretty wild in this game, but I won't lie to you, the story, it's not the most epic, it's not as dramatic or interesting as Jack 2 and 3, but I still like it. But I'll also say this is a very lighthearted story. There's very low stakes it feels like for the most part, and it just doesn't ever really get dark. So if you're expecting an edge like Jack 2 and 3, you're not going to find it here. When it comes to the gameplay, it's different from Jack 2 and 3. Again, it is a straight up 3D platformer collectathon. You are dropped into this massive open world and basically told, hey, you need so many of this object to continue, go find them. And yeah, you just explore the world and find them. In this game, you're looking for power cells, which are essentially your power stars if you're familiar with Mario 64. But yeah, you want to collect these power cells to continue. There's a few other collectibles here, but power cells are the main focus. And how do you get these? Sometimes you do something for people. A lot of the time you just find them through platforming. And it feels almost crazy to say about a Jack and Daxter game, but the main focus here is platforming. Platforming is what this game is all about. So it's good that the controls and feel are as good as they are. The control are excellent in this game and everything has a real weight to it. I really like how Jack handles and controls and I think the platforming is solid. I think platforming feels good in this game and it's fun to control him. His moveset also keeps things interesting. It isn't super generic and lame. He actually does have a few cool abilities and you get some new abilities as you play through thanks to Eco and some interesting situations arise thanks to these powers. Now, when it comes to the open world itself, there is level design here. It's not just like cookie cutter open world here. There is actually level design for this entire thing. Think of like Banjo-Tooie levels, but expanded on greatly and with a lot less filler and just empty space. While this game doesn't have the biggest open world, 
worlds, they are very dense. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of detail, a lot of nooks and crannies and secrets and things to find. And I really appreciate that. I enjoy exploring around and the sense of discovery in this game is very strong. And I like the way that the game progresses. It constantly keeps things fresh. You go to different environments, new challenges and situations arise and it never really feels like you're doing the same thing twice outside of platforming. Some little gimmicks and mini games show up here. There are a few parts where you drive this vehicle and I actually like driving the vehicle and keeping it cool and I think the mini games, yeah, they're fine for what they are. They aren't amazing but they do provide a little variety and they're not a nuisance. They're not awful like some of the Sly Cooper mini games. I don't have an issue with these mini games. Something I really don't have an issue with is the presentation. This game, for when it came out, it looked amazing. It looks pretty good even nowadays. The frame rate is silky smooth. The animation is solid. The character models look great. Everything's really unique. This game has an excellent personality and aesthetic about it. But I think the most impressive thing is there is no loading screens in this game. Outside of fast traveling, that is. You can walk from one part of the game all the way to the end of the game with not a single loading screen plenty of games flex that nowadays but here's jack and daxter doing it over 20 years ago i think that's really cool and impressive the presentation is solid it's cute it's fun it's lighthearted. this game really just comes together in a way that not many other 3d platformers are able to with excellent level design platforming controls challenges it keeps things varied and interesting it has a wonderful sense of discovery a lighthearted plot a nice aesthetic and it's just an unforgettable experience experience. I've played through this game several times and every time I go, yeah, I really think this is the best of the Jack and Daxter series. I'm not saying everything went totally downhill after this game. I mean, I guess technically it might have, but I just think this is the best of the series. I think it is the best flow, the best gameplay, and while it doesn't have the most interesting story world, it's not kick-ass and cyberpunk and moody and edgy and broody and all that, I really enjoy it, man. There's just something about this game that tickles my brain in a funny way. Maybe it's just my nostalgia and I just love 3D platformers too much and this is just the hottest take imaginable, but I think the game totally holds up. I played it a couple years ago and went, yeah, still holds up, still a fantastic game. I have no problem recommending it to anybody that breathes air. Even if you don't like platformers, I think you might find something you like here. Am I totally crazy for having it this high on the list and above other critically acclaimed games like Uncharted 2 and Last of Us Part 2? Maybe, but I mean, this is my list and you can let me know down below how much you agree or disagree. Anyway, what do I think is the best Naughty Dog game of them all? I'm sure it's really surprising and unexpected and shocking. It's The Last of Us Part 1. It doesn't really matter which version of the game you're playing, whether it's the PS3 version, the PS4 version, the PC version. Okay, maybe it matters if you're playing that version. Or the PS5 version titled Part 1, the original Last of Us, the first game. It is really one of those unforgettable experiences that is just one of the greatest video games ever made. No hyperbole. When people think of Naughty Dog, especially nowadays, they're thinking of The Last of Us. That might very well be because they haven't really released least many games other than The Last of Us several times over, but The Last of Us really is their magnum opus. It is a fantastic game that Naughty Dog has just never been able to top. Who knows if they'll ever be able to top the original Last of Us. This game it's just excellent. Like, what can I even say about it at this point that hasn't already been said about it? The story, the gameplay, the presentation, the production value, the ending, like, it's all just crazy good. The story takes place in this apocalypse that sees this fungi basically take over and infect people like a zombie virus. I mean, a lot of people compare it to zombies, but this game is a little bit more nuanced than that, and I actually like that they use a real fungi. There's a good attention to detail there. And it's just about this man named Joel Trump trying to get this girl Ellie across the country for reasons. And it's just one of the most unforgettable experiences you'll ever have in a video game from start to finish. The game's intro is incredibly powerful, one of the strongest intros of any video game. You think the train is strong in Uncharted 2? Bro, the Last of Us intro? Oh. It really is just beyond words. You know the intro and how good it is. The ending, oh, same thing. It's just unbelievably good. And everything in between is also great. The way the game progresses, the other characters you meet, the twists, the turns, it's all so good. It's one of the best apocalypse stories of all media. Joel and Ellie are some of the most realized, well-defined characters of any video game. Their dialogue is exceptional, the way they go back and forth is great, the way that everything builds up and the bond they create, man, I could be here all day talking about that stuff. The story really just is that good. It is the best story Naughty Dog has ever made. I'd even go one step further and say it's the best story of any PlayStation game. And a lot of PlayStation games have amazing stories, but none of them have been able to top the first Last of Us. 
Plus. It just has such a dramatic impact, and I just feel like no other game has ever been able to hit me in the same way that The Last of Us has. It really does hit differently. Last of Us Part 2 hits with a bunch of different emotions I never expected to feel from a video game, but it doesn't hit how Last of Us Part 1 does, not even close. You've been hearing people go off about Last of Us story, world building, character building, dialogue, all of that for the last 10 plus years, and there's a reason. It's still hella hella good. But when it comes to the gameplay, I also think it's great. Sure, at its core, it is just kind of a third person shooter with the occasional stealth sequence and some light survival crafting elements, but the way every Everything comes together with the pacing, with the set pieces, and again with the story just makes it hit different. When it comes to the combat, there's a couple ways to go about it and by that I mean two. You can either be loud or silent. The game does encourage stealth at the beginning and you can do a majority of encounters stealthfully actually, but the stealth, I wouldn't say it's as good as Last of Us Part 2's, but it's alright for what it is, but it really isn't the focus here and a lot of the time you're just gonna get spotted or going guns blazing. The combat in this game is very visceral, it's very raw and it feels different especially compared to third person shooters at the time like Gears of War like this just feels very heavy weighted and it feels like every shot has impact and weight you also die really fast enemies die really fast and it's really just not messing around especially on the harder difficulties you could just straight up die in like one shot I think the best way to describe Last of Us 1's gun combat is it really feels like there are stakes with every single encounter which is something the second game absolutely does not carry over there is melee combat here but it is very very basic and it really is just kind of pressing one button and then you have all the survival elements throughout your journey you will find plenty of tools and materials that you can pick up to either craft new items or upgrade weapons with and I've always enjoyed searching around picking stuff up and one reason I have is because the level design is really good in this game the second game has very good level design also and it's incredibly realistic but the first game that level design is peak naughty dog it is some of the best level design you'll find for any linear game everything feels very real very lived in and it's just a joy to explore it all sure some people might be bored oh you're just walking through rooms pressing triangle or whatever but man that wasn't me I was looking in every nook and cranny I was exploring everything and having a blast doing it and then all of this comes together in a very neat tight 10-ish hour playthrough that absolutely does not get old. It keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time and I think the pacing and progression and just flow of this game is borderline perfect. It really doesn't get any better than this. Like I've mentioned, I think the second game just goes on way too long. This game, no. It ends like right at the perfect time. The gameplay never gets repetitive or stale or boring. It keeps things interesting. There's variety. The set pieces are good. The characters are great. You see all their arcs play out. It's just got a really good pace to it that is seemingly unmatched by like any other Sony game it's engaging and I just didn't want to put it down the first time I played through it I really didn't want to put it down I can still remember it like it was yesterday just playing the shit out of this game it's like two sittings I beat this game and because I was like oh I I have to see what happens I'm just mesmerized I'm brainwashed I couldn't do anything I had to finish the last of us and I don't think I'm alone in that I think a lot of people felt that similar sentiment and there's a reason so many people just go absolutely insane for the last of us and its story and characters it's just again unforgettable i feel like i'm rambling and just kind of saying the same thing over and over here it's just good 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 do you have any problems with it not really i mean it really is just that good of a game sure i don't love pushing the dumpster or moving the ladder and yeah i guess if you replay the game it could probably get a little stale since you already know the story but if that's the case i mean play the dlc that'll be new to you the dlc is pretty good also but honestly any cons or issues or negatives i have about this game feel minuscule they feel like at most nitpicks to the sheer avalanche of positives that this game has like the positives seemingly never end I've been rambling long enough go play last of us if you haven't already like it really is a game for everybody there's the TV show it's on plenty of platforms at this point you really got no excuse and that my friends is it we've talked about all of Naughty Dog's games I've ranked them all this took an eternity to record script edit all of that stuff I am a one-man army I do not have a team or anyone helping me in that sense so any support truly is appreciated. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm sure I'm going to see plenty of comments of people agreeing, disagreeing, etc. I'm all here for it. I love to read this shit. Well, if you made it to this part of the video, thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. Our secret code word for this video is going to be golf club. Yep. If you made it to this part, you comment golf club, you get a nice heart from me. And yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. Really appreciate it. Hope you all have a safe night, safe journey, whatever you're doing tomorrow. I hope it's a good day. Bye-bye now.